Warren Buffett once said, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. In this video, I'll show you five ways you can make passive income so that you can always have your money working for you even when you sleep. If you want to achieve financial freedom, then you need some passive income streams to supplement your active income stream like your full-time job or business. Contrary to its name, building multiple passive income streams does take a bit of both time and money, so they are active in the beginning. However, it is worth it in the end because it could become your ticket to financial freedom. By the end of the video, you will know five different ways to create passive income streams and how much time is required to create them. Also, make sure you watch all the way to the end because I will be giving out a bonus tip which is something very important to know. In fact, it's something I wish I could tell my younger self when I was learning how to invest and create passive income. So if that sounds good to you, let's roll the intro. What is going on my friends? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Brian and I love to talk about all things personal finance and investing. So consider subscribing to my channel and follow me on Instagram if you want to see more content like this in the future. Now let's start with the definition of passive income. Investopedia defines passive income as money earned from an enterprise with little or no ongoing effort involved, but most likely the upfront investment of a passive income stream took time and money. Oh, that was a bit of a mouthful. Now that last part is interesting because it's saying to make passive income you need both time and money. Some require more time and some require more money. Because contrary to popular belief, passive income is not always 100% passive, at least not at the beginning. In order to create a passive income stream, you first need to be active. At the beginning, you will have to put in a bit of time to create a foundation to make the income stream truly passive. Let me explain this with an example. Think of passive income as planting an apple tree. The end goal of planting an apple tree is having free apples in the future. So think of passive income as the apples. Now before you can harvest your delicious apples, you first need to plant the seed or the tree. You need to dig a hole, put in the right fertilizer, make sure it gets enough sunlight and water. You basically need to nurture it for a while before it's strong enough to produce apples for you. So there is a fair bit of work at the start. The same can be said of passive income. You need to spend time to research or create a product or service that will provide you passive income in the future. However, the great thing about passive income is once it's built, then you can reap the benefits for a very long time, much like an apple tree. Now let's move on to the first method in our top five list. The first way to earn passive income is by investing in stocks that pay a dividend. This can be individual stocks or index funds. In my opinion, this is the easiest way for most people. In this day and age of many online brokers with low brokerage fees, there is really no excuse for not investing. The barrier to entry has never been easier. There is also so much free information out there that shows you how to invest. To buy individual stocks, you need to look out for established companies that are dominant players in their respective industries. These companies have basically maxed out their growth phase and are making so much profit that they will reward you in the form of dividends if you invest in them. To be extra safe, you need to look out for companies that will continue to make profits under all market conditions. I'm talking about companies like Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson and Walmart. These are recession-proof companies that will continue to make profit no matter how the economy is doing. If you're in Australia like me, examples of good dividend companies include Commonwealth, Telstra and Woolworths. These are companies that people will continue to use under any market conditions. Most of these stocks will pay a dividend every three months. You can look online how much dividends a company is expected to pay by looking at the dividend yield. The yield is calculated by how much dividend per share is paid divided by the share price. However, just be aware that just because the dividend yield is high doesn't mean it's automatically a good investment. It could be misleading. Sometimes if the share price has gone down over the year, it means the dividend yield is higher. But that is not a good thing since you'll be losing out on the share value going down. So it can be quite risky if you invest only in one or a few stocks because if one of those stocks go down in value, then your stock portfolio will be greatly affected. Also, please note that dividends are not guaranteed and it's at the company's discretion how much is paid out each quarter. They could choose to stop dividends altogether during bad market conditions. In fact, during the midst of the pandemic in 2020, many companies stopped paying dividends since there was a lockdown and their businesses were closed. So to reduce the risk that individual companies bring, a good alternative option is to invest in index funds. But what are index funds? Investopedia defines an index fund as a type of mutual fund or exchange traded fund or ETF with a portfolio constructed to match or track their components of a financial market index, such as the S&P 500, which tracks the top 500 companies listed on the US stock market. So essentially, if you are investing in an index fund, you are investing in a basket of many companies from a single stock. The most popular way to invest in an index fund is by buying an ETF. An ETF can be purchased like any other stock. If you're living in the US, one of the most popular choice would be VOO, which is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. If you're living in Australia like me, the best option is probably IVV, which is the iShares Core S&P 500 ETF. Buying index funds is such a popular method that even legendary investor Warren Buffett recommends most people to buy them over individual stocks since they are so passive by nature. 
Index funds won't typically pay as high a dividend yield as the other stocks that I mentioned, but they offer great diversity, which in turn reduces risk. The passive income you will receive is the dividend it will pay and the capital appreciation of the share price going up in value over time. In fact, over the last 100 years, the S&P 500 has returned an annual compounded rate of approximately 10% per year. Now, that doesn't mean it will increase by 10% every single year. Some years it could be 15%, other years it could be negative 10%. The point is, over a long period of time, it has previously averaged out to be about 10% per year. In my opinion, saving some money aside every month and dollar cost averaging into index funds is the best way to create passive income as it requires little work for the big reward it can bring in the future. However, I am not a financial advisor, so please do your own research when considering investing your money into stocks. Another popular way to make passive income is rent from your investment property or your primary place of residence. Investment properties can make you money from the price appreciation over time. You can also charge someone rent to live in this house. These are two ways to create passive income. However, it does take a large sum of money to get started in real estate and not to mention the time required to manage any tenants or dealing with agents. And given the high cost of real estate in the current market, I appreciate that this method is not feasible to some. Alternatively, if you currently own or have a mortgage on the property that you are living in, then you can do something called house hacking. House hacking is a strategy where you rent out all the spare rooms in your house and charge enough rent to cover the cost of your mortgage payment and monthly utilities. Although I would also argue that this would take a lot of work and luck to get the right roommates. And whether it is truly passive income will depend how good your roommates are at paying rent on time. With that being said, if you do manage to implement this strategy correctly, then not only are you creating passive income, you are essentially living in your house for free. Another passive income option is to offer your spare rooms on Airbnb. This will work particularly well if you live in a location close to the city or near tourist areas. You could rent out a room every month and earn passive income from doing this. I know of many people successfully doing this and once you understand how Airbnb works, then it becomes easier to manage. Or if you don't want to own a property but still want the benefits of real estate, you can invest in something called REITs, which stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. There are many types of REITs which focuses on different property sectors such as retail or shopping centers, hotels and resorts, or healthcare and hospitals. You can invest in these like stocks through a REIT ETF, which will pay you a dividend depending on how well they perform. If you're interested, you can do some research online to see which REITs would suit your investing style. The third way to make passive income is to start a YouTube channel. If you run a successful YouTube channel, you can monetize it through Google AdSense, which allows you to put ads in between your videos, which your audience will see. Advertising is a massive market and there are many companies out there willing to pay big money to Google who owns YouTube to place ads in your videos. They will share a percentage of the fee to the content creators who post videos on YouTube. Now this will definitely require a lot of time at the start. As a new YouTube channel, you need to be putting out plenty of quality content to attract potential subscribers. A lot of people will get discouraged by the large amount of hours you have to put in for no money for at least the first year. It's not easy. Now let's look at my own YouTube channel as an example for anyone wanting to start their own. I will admit it is a bit of a grind to research, script, film and edit my videos. But you know what? I love talking about personal finance and I love video editing. So for me, even though it's a lot of work, it's also a lot of fun. In order for me to monetize my channel, I require 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time in the last 12 months. I predict this could take me at least a year. I'm quite confident in getting to 1,000 subscribers because I know the value that I bring. Any videos that I make, I spend hours on end researching and making sure it brings maximum value to my audience. I have a high expectation when watching other people's YouTube videos, so it's only fair for me to live up to my high expectations with my own videos. I wouldn't ever put out a video that I wouldn't watch myself. So if you want to help me reach that 1,000 subscriber mark earlier and be able to say you're one of the true Brian Invest OGs in a few years time, then I would really appreciate if you could please hit that subscribe button for me. So moving on. To fulfill the 4,000 hours of watch time, I will need to put out more quality videos. At the moment, I'm currently working full time and I have a seven month old daughter to take care of, so I have to make the most of any free time that I have. Luckily, I have a supportive wife and family members who help me out and encourage me to pursue my YouTube dream. I am very confident that I'll produce enough quality content to fulfill both criteria. I already have a year's worth of good content planned out and to be scheduled for release. So for me, I plan to be on YouTube for the long haul. Before even starting this YouTube channel, I've been studying how to run a successful YouTube channel for the last 5 years. I followed many great YouTubers along the way and many of them were small channels at the time and I noted how the successful ones got to where they are now. The main observation I noticed was consistency. Of course you have to put out quality content that people get value from but the ones that I saw do well were the ones who were consistent with their uploads. The ones who only uploaded here and there were quickly left behind. So this is something to keep in mind if you are planning to start a YouTube channel. To stay consistent as something which won't pay you for a long time, you need to enjoy what you are doing. I think if you choose to start a YouTube channel for passive income in the future, then you need to love the topic that you are talking about.
For me personally, I love talking about personal finance and investing, and I like being creative with video editing. So it's a win-win for me. If I make some passive income in the future, then awesome. But if not, then hey, at least I helped a few people on their way to financial freedom, which is the main goal of this channel. The best thing about YouTube is once you monetize, every single video you make will continue making you passive income forever or as long as YouTube is in business. So you could be sleeping and there could be someone watching your video on the other side of the world, which makes you money. And to me, that is the purest definition of passive income. Do something once and continue to reap the rewards for a long time. If you don't want to start a YouTube channel because maybe you don't want to show your face, then maybe consider starting a blog or an Instagram theme page. The same principles will apply with YouTube. You will need to put out quality content to attract new followers. You will then eventually be able to put up ads that will create passive income for you. There are also other ways to monetize your YouTube channel, blog or Instagram page, which leads me to the next method. And the next passive income method I want to talk about is affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is an advertising tactic in which a company compensates a third party to generate traffic to their company's product or services. The third parties are referred to as affiliates and the commission fee incentivizes them to promote the company. I'm sure you've seen a custom link to a product from your favorite YouTuber or Instagram page where they are promoting the product and will receive a small commission fee if you click their link and buy their product. For example, on my YouTube channel, since I love talking about cryptocurrency, I have an affiliate link for CoinSpot, which is one of the cryptocurrency exchanges I use in Australia. Since I enjoy using the service, I'm comfortable sharing my affiliate link which will give $10 of Bitcoin to anyone who signs up and I'll also receive $10 of Bitcoin as a commission fee. So the way I see it, everyone wins. The company gets a new customer, the customer gets a freebie and a good service and I get a kickback for recommending it. Everyone wins. If you want to make some passive income with affiliate marketing, then you will need some kind of audience. So again, it will take some work up front without much monetary gain in the beginning. Some ideas include starting a YouTube channel, a blog, Instagram page, Twitter account, TikTok, and other popular social media platforms. I would recommend building up your audience first before being too focused on affiliate marketing. Because let's be honest, no one will be clicking a random stranger's link that they don't trust. But once you build up a loyal audience base, this can be very lucrative depending on the niche you focus on. For example, if you start a tech YouTube channel, you can do product reviews and leave Amazon links to the product. And since tech is generally a high price item, the commission you receive will also be high. You can also create a kit page using kit.co and link all the tech gear that you use to shoot your YouTube videos. You can also create custom links from Amazon which will automatically be tied to your Amazon affiliate account so when someone uses that link, Amazon knows to compensate you. You can also create an Amazon shop and do the same thing. It's just that using the kit link will allow you to create links from other stores like Walmart and Best Buys all in one spot. Now I will say you need to have your audience's best interest in mind. You need to be ethical and only recommend products that you truly like and believe in. Personally, I would never recommend a product or put an affiliate link to something I've never tried before or don't think it's a good product just to get the commission. If you start linking every random product that you find, then your audience will just get annoyed and you'll lose their trust. So always be honest, genuine, and know that your audience is the most important key to your success when it comes to affiliate marketing. The last passive income method that I want to talk about is selling a digital product like an ebook or online course. For this method, you'll need some expertise in your niche. For example, if you're a chef, you could write an ebook on food recipes. If you're in the personal finance niche like me, you could write an ebook about investing or budgeting. If you're in the fitness industry, you could write an ebook about workout routines and meal plans. You get the idea. You can use the knowledge you already have to create a digital product. Of course, writing an ebook will take time. Like most of the method on this video, it will take some work. However, once you have finished the book, there is no limit on how much passive income you can make. The best thing about a digital product is that you can keep selling the same product indefinitely. If you already have an audience from say YouTube or Instagram, you can promote the product yourself. Otherwise, you can pay other influencers to promote your product for you and use the affiliate marketing method that we previously talked about. Only this time you'll be the one paying commission to the influencers who market the products for you. If you do have an audience already, you could also sell online courses about your niche. You can use platforms like Thinkific and Teachable, which makes it easy to host your own online courses. So check out those sites if you're interested in creating an online course. Again, you'll need to put in time to create these courses because your audience will be expecting quality content if they are parting with their money to learn from you. So you really need to give them a reason to be happy and give good reviews to their friends. Because word of mouth is one of the most powerful tools when it comes to marketing. Think about it. If a friend personally told you a service is good, you would believe them over a random online review. So keep this in mind if you want to sell digital products for passive income. Now for the bonus tip that I promised at the start of the video. The biggest tip I would give is to understand that you don't need anyone's validation to do these things. By nature, humans seek validation from others, be it your family or friends. Growing up, I was guilty of this. I would always seek validation from my friends before doing anything. If my friends aren't buying stocks, why should I? They're not making real estate investments, so why should I? Or if I start a YouTube channel or another side hustle, what if they laugh or criticize me? If you're thinking like this, then stop. Do not fall for this fallacy. You are the hero in your story. 
Everyone else around you are just secondary characters. You are the captain of your ship and you decide which direction you want to go. The hard truth is other people don't care. And not in a nasty way. They don't care because they too are busy with their own lives and have their own self-doubts. Humans are quite selfish by nature and most people are just thinking about their own lives first and rightfully so. So if you ever want to do something, just do it. If you want to gain financial freedom by joining the FIRE movement, then do it. If you want to start a business and be your own boss, then do it. If you want to be a YouTuber and do things you're passionate about, then do it. I promise you the world will not end the next day because you decided to take the leap. So to summarize the video, the five passive income ideas we talked about today are dividend stocks and index funds, real estate income, starting a YouTube channel, affiliate marketing, and selling a digital product. Each of these ideas does require some form of active work before they can become passive income. However, if you can get them right, then it could be extremely rewarding for you. I would recommend you try to implement a few of these ideas because the more passive streams of income you have to supplement your active income, the closer you'll be to reaching financial freedom. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you found it useful, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and follow me on Instagram if you would like more regular investing content. So until next time, my name is Brian and I hope you make a lot of money.